third and final race is about to get underway here for both the Super Cup Championship and the Super Series. Now we've got the top seven reverse for the Super Cups, which leads Lewis Kent putting it on pole position. Now we also have Matt Fickford, who's won two races this weekend in the Super Series, back on pole position. Is he going to make it free out of free? And yeah, I'm going to hand it over to you to run through all of the action. Yeah, so Lewis Kent then in his first appearance in the MX5 Super Cup has got a pole position here with the reverse grid. He's got Will Stevenson alongside him, Jack Sycamore and Patrick Fletcher row two, then the big three, Hills, Harding and Herbert, fifth, sixth and seventh. David Henderson, the man that just missed out on the reverse grid in eighth. Nick Rutter and Gary Townsend share the fifth row, then it's Bradley Kent and Chris Richardson ahead of Paul Myers on row seven. Then the two non-finishers from race number two, Joe Marshall Burks and Chris Dawkins. In the Super Series, there is no grid reversal, so it's results from the previous race that decide it. Pickford and Hutchings row one, then Miller and Powell's on row two. Christina Holly and Declan Lee share the third row, ahead of Adam Rowlandson and David O'Reilly, seventh and eighth. Jim Hart and Liz Walton are next, and Simon Fleet will start at the back. After his retirement in the previous race, though, he definitely is the favourite to make lots of overtakes in this race. He should be able to still challenge for a top five from there. So Lewis Kent then, his first appearance in the MX5 Super Cup and one of his first ever races in rear-wheel drive machinery is about to go from pole position in the Clapham North livery car. He's on the left of the shot, on the right is Will Stevenson, away they go. And it's a good start made by Kent from pole position, a brilliant start made by Patrick Fletcher though in the black and red car on the outside line going down to Redgate Corner. Hills is up the inside of Sycamore, Harding trying to go with him around the outside as well. I don't know where to look really, there's a fight for the lead, the championship contenders are all trying to make progress as well, it's Kent that will lead them out of Redgate though, and Fletcher appeared to be slotting into second position, on board with Alex Miller now then, as the Super Series rates could get some way, and look at the start for Clyde Powell's right round the outside, Pickford from pole was not away strongly, and so it's Hutchings and Powell's that will debate the lead into the first turn, and on the inside line it should be series debutant Simon Hutchings who leads them through the first corner and indeed he does. Powell needs to try and slot back in in front of Matt Pickford before Matt fights back against him which is exactly what he manages to do. So Powell slots into second and Pickford double winner down to third but he ought to have the pace to challenge for a victory given the speed that he's shown in the previous two races. Right at the head of the Super Cup field Hills and Harding are making good progress now. Remember we've seen time and again this year that in these reverse grid races what wins you the race often is being the first of the quick drivers to get past some of those that maybe have inherited good positions due to the grid reversal and Jack Harding has been a bit of a master at winning these race threes. He won the first two at uh, Sletterton and Alton Park. Uh, and then he did the same again a couple of rounds ago at Brands Hatch. So he's very good at winning the reverse grid races, Jack Harding. And he really could do with winning this one as well. Super Series leaders then from out of Coppice Corner. On board with Alex Miller here in fourth position, chasing down the leading three. They head down to the chicane whilst Lewis Kent is sideways. Oh, Lewis Kent's off from... Uh, well, he wasn't leading, was he? He was down to second. Hills had got past him. And Jack Harding was up the inside as they went into the hairpin. So, well, Lewis Kent unfortunately runs down to the back of the field. Bradley Kent is brothers on the grass as well. So they've actually dropped almost to the back of the Super Cup grid now. Only Paul Myers is behind them. So the end result is then that Hills leads the way. Harding is second, Fletcher third, Sycamore and Herbert almost side by side for fourth place there. But Luke Herbert really needs to try and get away with Hills and Harding. This could be the race in which Harding is able to take some big points out of Luke, who is challenging around the outside of Sycamore into Redgate Corner, but Sycamore has the inside line and will hang on to that fourth position. Remember that although Luke Herbert won the first, the uh, second race, sorry, ahead of Jack Harding, Harding set the fastest lap, so they actually came out of it on exactly the same amount of points, so it is still a 10-point cushion for Herbert. Harding then needs to try and do something about this now, try and take some points out of his big rival in this race. This is by far and away his best opportunity this weekend to do that. He and Aidan Hills can work together here, pull away from the rest of the field. That will at least guarantee that Luke Herbert will do no better than third. He's already ahead of Jack Sycamore, though into fourth position as they come around the top end of the circuit. There he is, blue number one car, then Jack Sycamore, then Will Stevenson and Gary Townsend behind. And uh, they head through Coppice Corner then in a rather jumbled order, but that's the joy of these reverse grid races. They often do throw a bit of a spanner in the works. Hills then leading the way, Harding for now seems uh, content to work with him. Luke Herbert can't afford to sit behind anyone though, he has to attack, and attack he does, goes up the inside of Patrick Fletcher there, takes third place away at the chicane, but look at the real estate that he's got to try and bridge now to get to the top two. Aiden Hills will know here what's going on, he'll know that Harding isn't particularly like to, likely to attack him, so they should be able to continue to work in unison for a few more laps. Jack Sycamore gets ahead of Patrick Fletcher now as well, he's into fifth, Fletcher down to sixth, then Stevenson seventh, Townsend eighth, Nick Rutter is the orange machine in ninth position. 
top two then head out of the final corner. Along the start finish line once again, Hills, Harding, then the gap, then Herbert, Sycamore, Fletcher, Stevenson, <laughs> and the rest. Townsend and Rutter next in line. Further back, you can see the pair of Kents trying to regain their lost time. It's a real shame for Lewis in particular, who had that opportunity at the front of the grid to maybe try and get himself a podium. But uh, not to be, unfortunately. So Herbert then starting to make good his escape. He's pulling away here from the group behind him. Sycamore, Fletcher, Stevenson and Townsend all fairly evenly matched it would seem at this stage of the race. <laughs> Stevenson a bit wired onto the grass there at the old head and that is one of the key areas that the officials will be looking at for track limits uh, infringements and that may have just been classified as one there for Will Stevenson. May not have gained an advantage but that's really by the by. If you run over the edge of the track onto the grass you will get yourself in trouble. Then, similarly, if you cut the corner too much at places like Coppice Corner, you can get in trouble as well. So, it's not just the exits of the corners that uh, officials are looking for. Not allowed to shortcut the track either. They all kept it nice and clean there. Stevens had a particularly good run out of the chicane, though, and is now challenging Patrick Fletcher. But Fletcher, the black and red machine, turns into the chicane ahead, hangs on to the position. They're in the top two then. I don't anticipate we'll see any fireworks just yet between the two of them, unless Jack Harding believes that he is quicker than Aiden Hills. If he does think he's quicker, then maybe it would be more beneficial if he was in front and then Aiden would to follow him, but Aiden might not go along with that plan, so um, that's when things might start to kick off. Luke Herbert in third is setting a strong pace at the moment as well, so he is everybody as quick as the top two. You just need to try and catch them, and that's not going to be all that easy to do. Just across the line they go then. Hills and Harding still in the same order, down to Redgate Corner. Further back, Lewis Kent is on the grass, coming out of the final turn at Goddard's. This group of cars makes their way through Redgate Corner. Will Stevenson there flings the number 62 car in. It's uh, showing a bit of a scar from an earlier battle there on the uh, rear left corner, but the car has been packed back up again ahead of this race. Will Stevenson's... Uh, results this weekend have been mixed, I think it's fair to say, a disqualification from the first race, uh, but then fourth from the back to finish in sixth in race number two. Looking for another top six, maybe even top five this time, if he can get it. He does turn through McLean's corner. There's Herbert third. Oh, and Harding having a go there at Aiden Hills. That was interesting. So, Harding maybe he's felt that he is quicker than Hills. Of course, at some point this race, he was always going to attack Aiden Hills. My point was that if they waited a bit longer, they could get even further away from Luke Herbert, because in theory, two cars working together should be quicker than one on its own. These two aren't working together, though. Will Stevens and Patrick Fletcher are side by side again, coming out of Coppice Corner. And Stevenson on the outside line. Now, this can be done, but you've got to be brave under braking, and Patrick Fletcher just crowds him out to the edge of the road there, make sure that he doesn't find a way through. Hills has held on to the lead then, despite that little challenge from Herbert at the top of the track. And you can see there, no need to defend for Hills. He knows that Herb, that uh, Harding is uh, to stay in his wheel tracks. I know there are no such luxuries being afforded. Every man for himself here in the midfield battle as they all try and uh, salvage the best result possible from the end of the day. Back in the Super Series, what's happening here? Well, Hutchings still leads, Powell's his second, Pickford third, then Miller and Fleet there, fourth and fifth. Number seven car is Alex Miller then, just, offside, uh, just outside the podium places, but Simon Fleet from the back of the grid has made some really nice progress here and is already looking like he could challenge for a podium place here, maybe even the victory if he gets through this group of cars quickly. Simon Fleet has not actually won a race yet this year. He's been on the podium five times in the Super Series, but not actually been on the top step of the podium yet. He's got some work to do if he wants to do that in this race, but he might just have the chance to. Down across the start finish line, they go then. Top two a little bit more separated. It's really these three cars fighting for third. Pickford, Miller, and Fleet that are of most interest right now. Miller there, the number seven Boring Motorsport car. Races his way down through the Craner curves. Curves were picked for that. That's brave to use the uh, red and white painted rumble strip on the left hand side. That can very easily upset the car through the grainer curves, but uh, no such issues for Pickford. Right, there are your leaders. Herbert, as you can see, is getting no closer to them at the moment, so this tactic is working quite well between Aiden and, and uh, Jack. 
if they choose to continue working together, then they'll continue to pull away. But look at that. That's the first time that Aiden Hills has really felt the need to defend the lead into the hairpin. So he clearly felt that maybe the body language of uh, Jack Harding's car had changed and that maybe Jack was starting to look for a way through. But if Aiden starts to defend, then you can't count out the possibility of Luke Herbert catching them before the end of the race. Luke's not had the best of weekends. That win in race two will have helped his confidence a little bit, but generally speaking, this looks like it might be one of his lowest scoring weekends of the year. He's still not been off the podium yet, but uh, that's how consistent his season has been so far. That the Super Series lot there, a third of a lap further back, heading into the final corner. And, uh, Alex Miller still trying to find a way past Matt Pickford, who likewise is still on the tail of Clyde Powell's, but hasn't been able to find a way through. Oh, Miller all of a sudden seemed to slow there coming out of the last corner. Maybe missed a gear, maybe there's an issue with the car, but Pickford and Powell's really pulled away from them. Look at the gap that they built up coming across the uh, start-finish straight. Powell's, though, is driving a little defensively into Redgate corner, just to try and uh, see off any potential challenge from Matt Pickford. And out of the corner, just as close as they were going into it. Starting to pair off now, but all of this is allowing Simon Hutchings to pull away Simon already with two podiums then on his debut in the series could he get a win now though I wonder he's looking like he's possibly got the pace to do that having taken a third and a second in the first two races it's fitting in a way that he gets a race victory in race number three this time around no defensive driving from Aidan Hills so the plan is still in action they're still working together it may not be until the last five minutes or so that Harding really starts to attack Hills, but you never know. It could, if he sees a chance earlier than that to go through, if Hills makes a mistake, then he may well take it. Second place for Harding would give him 98 points. Third for Herbert would give him 96. So that would be another two points taken out. Harding has the fastest lap at the moment, actually, so he'd take four points out of him if things finish as they are now. If he won that would be six points and the gap would be down to four points going to Silverstone next time out Silverstone National Circuit playing host to the next three races and that is a bit like the Daytona of Master MX5 racing it's basically just three long straights with a couple of hairpins at the end so lots of side by side racing lots of slip streaming lots of overtaking and lots of potential therefore for things to go wrong it was at Silverstone National at the start of last year that Luke Herbert had by far his worst weekend of his 2018 campaign Harding had a pretty good time of it, all things considered, so he will definitely be looking to try and recreate that sort of magic in a few weeks' time. But he'd love to go to Silverstone just four points off the championship lead rather than six points off the championship lead. Which is how things will stand if we threw the chequered flag now. Neither of these two going any quicker, and now looking on a great run out of the chicane for Hill, so he does now start heavily defending, and that pretty much means that the fastest lap pace has been set now neither of these two are likely to go any quicker if they start battling Luke Herbert hasn't yet got a slipstream either so he's not likely to take the points away so it is now just a straight fight for the race victory between Aiden Hills and Jack Harding meanwhile here come the Super Series gang and it's still Hutchings leading but where's Clyde Powell's gone Powell's has vanished now so Pickford into second Fleet third and fourth place for Alex Miller now Powell's is still running, he's just lost a lot of time, so I don't know what's happened there to Clive, but he's dropped out of the podium battle now for sure. So just a four-way scrap now for the victory. Hutchings seems to have been caught slightly here as well by Pickford, so Pickford, having got into that clean air, does seem to have the pace to draft up behind the race leader. Across the line they go, there's Clive Powell, look in the background in fifth, so just ahead of David O'Reilly, he's still in the top five, but several seconds now behind the leading quartet and that's not likely to be catchable I think over the rest of the race because these are of course the four other fastest drivers in the Super Series this weekend they're not going to be easy to catch unless they really start to trip over each other oh, very very wayward line there for Hutchings he's really pushing hard now to try and get away from Pickford once Max gets that toe though that will make life very difficult for the race leader to continue to pull away Hills semi-defensive this time into Melbourne oh 
Oh, Jack Harding, though, sees an opening, gets to the inside. There was a bit of a mistake there from Aiden Hills. He went in on the, the middle line, and that meant that he just ran a bit wide at the apex. And Harding had to try and take advantage, but the next corner is a left-hander, and he's not going to go right round the outside here. So Hills should come back into view the race leader. Yes, he does. He's sideways, though, so Harding will have another run down the pit straight. And look, immediately, Luke Herbert starts to catch them. He'll be loving seeing this in front of him, with just less than half the race still to go. Battle is well and truly joined now between Aiden Hills and Jack Harding. Is this going to be enough for Herbert to catch them, I wonder? Through the right-hander at Redgate they go. Harding looking to try and get the better run down the Craner curves, but Hills gets off the turn well. Even considering the fact that he's going in on these tight lines, he's not getting a bad run off the corner. So that car's had good traction all weekend long. And Jack Harding just can't quite get to the inside line, but that was the most serious attempt, I think, that he's made so far to get through. And again, it wasn't necessarily a planned attack there for Harding, but he saw the gap and he had to go for it because if he hadn't gone through, then that would have definitely put him in the box seat. But uh, as it is, they just wasted a bit of time racing side by side. Very entertaining for us, but not so entertaining for those two, I'd imagine, because they would much rather continue to build this margin over Luke Herbert and then settle it between themselves on the last lap. Aiden Hills trying his best here to hang on, though, to take a fifth victory of the year. Um, Paul Myers car to be lapped again as they run down the hill. They have safely negotiated him out of the chicane. Harding another little peek, just shows his nose to the inside there. A very wide line into the hair, but to try and to get the run on Myers up the hill. Paul's been doing his best to stay out of people's way, but sometimes you eventually have to turn into the corner, and if there's a faster car behind you, you just have to deal with it really. But Herbert, I think, despite that fat marker, has gained a little bit of time on the leading two now. Who are still, nose to tail, still with Aidan Hills ahead of Jack Harding. Jack Harding, does he have another go maybe here into Redgate Corner? No. No doubt he was considering it, though. But he doesn't want to take a, a wild lunge. It's not really worth the risk. But if he can just try and outfox Aidan Hills, force a mistake, that's going to be his best way of getting through, I think. Aidan... Doesn't make many mistakes, but we have seen on occasion when he's been under pressure at the front of the field that maybe he's outbraked himself, slipped a bit wide, maybe a bit more prone to mistakes than someone like Jack Harding is, because Jack Harding has that extra few years of experience in the championship. But uh, Aiden is a very quick driver and gets more and more consistent as his MX5 Super Cup career goes on, but he's just a bit slower than Harding off McLean's. He's every bit the match for Jack Harding and Luke Herbert. We've seen that time and again this year from Aiden Hills in what's been by far and away his best season of racing in circuit racing, at least I'd say. He was a former star of the junior rallycross scene before he came and started racing in Mazdas, but uh, here he is leading the way with the top two in the championship right behind him. And they are definitely holding each other up now. Herbert is inching back towards them. Harding might get up the inside here into the chicane, into the hairpin. Sorry, I think he has done. Jack Harding going for the lead of the race, but Aiden Hill sends it in super late on the brakes. Side by side off the corner. They're leaning on each other almost as they go off the Melbourne hairpin. Still there side by side, but Luke Herbert is now close enough, I think, to get a bit of a tow from the two of them. When they next come onto a straight, Luke Herbert is going to be able to tow right onto their tail. And yes, it's now three for the lead again. That gap was a couple of seconds, a lap or so ago, and instantly it disappears. But is there enough time for Luke Herbert to do anything about this? Because we're on to the final lap of the race now. Hills has held on to the lead somehow and I really don't know how because he had the outside line into the uh, Melbourne hair but it's not often that you come out of that position in front but he did hold on to the lead Harding stays second and Luke Herbert still trying to just close those extra few feet to be a genuine part of this battle down the hill into the old hairpin they go again and Harding has a little look at the inside but he bails out of it. Hills though is a bit wide of the apex they're going to rub again if they're not too careful on the exit of the corner and now Luke Herbert does have a run on the pair of them and Jack Hardy has to try and fend him off he can't afford to let Luke Herbert go through and just as we saw in race one Aidan Hills might be able to use this to his advantage he's starting to get away Jack Harding at all costs has to beat Luke Herbert in this race and Luke Herbert suddenly is a much, much bigger threat to Jack Harding's second place than he's been at any other point in this race. They're side by side off Coppice Corner for the final time. The more they race like this, the more this is in the bag for Aiden Hills. But who will finish second and what will that mean for the championship? They're wing mirror to wing mirror down the back straight. Herbert on the outside, but Harding's later on the brakes. Gets into the chicane first. What about the exit speed, though? He's held on, so it's still going to be Harding in second place. And I don't think that Herbert's going to be close enough to challenge now into the last couple of corners. Luke Herbert gave it everything he had there. He had another lap or so there to really challenge them. 
he might have been able to find a way past, but as it is, it looks as though Aidan Hills is going to take his sixth victory, fifth victory, excuse me, of the season. Out of the final corner he comes, he's very happy, punches the air in delight. Jack Harding takes second place and the fastest lap, though. There will be six points between them as we go to the penultimate meeting of the year at Silverstone in a few weeks' time. Herbert Salvage is third, but he'll be a little disappointed with that. Sycamore is fourth, Stevenson fifth, just from uh, Patrick Fletcher in sixth position. That was only just over a tenth of a second between them. And then Joe Marshall Burks, that is, with the new white front end on his car, ahead of Nick Rutter, David Henderson, and Gary Townsend to round out the top ten, despite a track limits penalty of five seconds for Gary Townsend, but he was still salvage a top ten finish at the end of the day. Hills then with the victory, Harding closes in on the championship lead, and Herbert will have some real work to do to hold on to it at Silverstone next time out. Just the one non-finisher, that was Chris Dawkins, whose return to the championship sadly has not gone to plan. In the uh, championship standings then, there is the confirmation. Six points in it after drop scores are applied, with Aidan Hills 32 points back. Patrick Fletcher is looking more secure in fourth now, whilst Gary Townsend, equally, is fairly safe in fifth. In the Super Series, it was Simon Hutchings that took his first ever victory in the MX5 Super Series. Simon Fleet was second, and Matt Pickford, double winner, has to settle the third this time. Alex Miller was fourth, with Clyde Powell's in fifth, whilst sadly Declan Lee was a non-starter. Aidan, talk us through that race, because all we could see was you and Jack. Well, yeah, that's all I could see was him. <laughs> don't think I looked forward very much. Um, yeah, we got, to the, got into the lead early on, obviously starting fifth. Got through it as quick as I can. I didn't expect Jack to be there with me, so we got we got in the pack straight away. We got through, and um, yeah, it was just 20 minutes of just, just watching him, see where he was going. Uh, sometimes I'd pull a bit of a gaff, sometimes he'd get me back, and... I just had to put the car in the right places. I'm absolutely over the moon, to be honest. You know, two wins. I've had two real bad rounds the last two rounds. So to come back, two wins and a third, over the moon. Well, we couldn't be happy for you. So we're going to let you go and enjoy this win and hopefully we'll see you at Silverstone. Thank you. Yeah, obviously, just got to say a big thanks to Dad, Erin, my sister, Granddad, James for coming, everyone that's helped us out. You know, it's been a hard couple of months with me being grumpy because I'm not winning races. So it's good to come back. Two wins, yeah, over the moon. Can't wait for Silverstone. One for this year, for pulling out... out the barrel somehow going from the reverse grid to the front but Aidan kept you on your toes on that round. Yeah I was hoping I'd get a really good start like I do at Brands. Um, I got a load of wheel spin and Aidan got a really good start so uh, yeah I tried to go around the outside turn one um, and then before I knew it me and Aidan was pretty much in the lead. Um, I think Lewis Kent seriously messed up and he took it um, in out the race but we managed to uh, continue um, so yeah for the first half of the race I just pointed in to go because uh, I knew Luke had got into third at that point and I thought I really don't want to battle with Luke as well right now so uh, first half of the race I just pushed Aiden round we got a nice big gap and then it was just the second half of the race I tried a couple of things but his pace were really good and you know fair play to him he uh, defended really well we were side by side a couple of times a little bit of rubbing but other than that it was really fair racing so I really enjoyed it. You are really well known throughout this paddock though, being fantastic for attacking. So you did keep Aiden on his toes, as I said, but what was your favourite moment going around there? I was trying to force a mistake. I mean, I got a really good run through the chicane um, and I was side by side with him into the hairpin and I lost the rear end and Aiden just gave me loads of room and we went through the hairpin side by side, um, which was really good to be honest, something that we didn't make contact and it was just, you know, I trust Aiden quite a bit. Um, so it was really good racing. So AK have done a great job on the car once again. Um, Shame I couldn't have got the win after qualifying on double pole. But um, yeah, close the gap in the championship, so it makes it interesting for the last couple of rounds. Definitely. You are joining us at Silverstone, aren't you? Yes, I am, yeah. Perfect. Well, we will let you go and enjoy the second place, and we'll see you then. Thank you very much. Cheers. Luke, I'm very intrigued to know your thoughts on that race, because you got held up quite a bit by a bark marker. Yeah, um, didn't get as good a start as uh, Aiden and Jack. They, you know, they carve through the traffic like they always do on these reverse grids. And um, took me a while to get through. Once I was through, they were just gone. Um, I thought I might be able to get the quickest lap, but without a tow round here, it's very difficult. And I could see Jack backing off from Aiden, getting the fastest lap. So, you know, he was very tactical in that race, you know, which is what he needs to do to to um, to catch me up. And I think he's taken six points at me at six points at me this weekend. So, um, so my my bad, my bunkers down to six. So, uh, but you know, it's been a good. You know, I feel like I've had a really good weekend, but I've lost six points. But you know, that's the way it goes. Well, you are one of our most smiley drivers in this paddock, I will say that. So it's nice to know you're still going away with a smile on your face. But a bit more work to do come Silverstone? 
Yeah, I've got a slight problem with my exhaust. Um, it's, it's, it's making a weird noise, but you know. But yeah, you've got to smile, haven't you? Um, you know, if you've had a good race, it doesn't matter where you come. Um, if you win the championship, it's a bonus. So um, we've had two on the trot, so hopefully we'll make it three. But uh, with, with Jack's pace this weekend, it looks like, you know, it's going to be very difficult. So, um, and Aiden, I think, Aiden's also catching back up. So we'll see, but yeah, bring on Silverstone. God, I like the attitude. Positive thinking. Well, congratulations again and well done. Cheers. Thank you very much. Simon, a huge congratulations. You were absolutely giving everything to make sure you came away with first place this weekend. I, I was, absolutely, yeah. And if, first of all, it's just been a fantastic first experience here. Um, racing with the Super Series is something that I've had on my bucket list for the last few years, trying to uh, get the car up and running. Uh, so I'd really like to thank uh, Chris Husey of, uh, of KH Graphics, who's uh, really looked after me for, for for years now with with Mazdas and Paul Shade has looked after me this weekend. But also the the other competitors in the Super Series, yeah, they've been really really friendly, really welcoming, and yeah, I've had a had a fantastic fantastic time. So, yeah, so you know, I was had no idea where I was gonna you know come in terms of pace this weekend. So qualifying, I was probably more nervous before qualifying than I was for either of the races. So I thought you know don't want to come dead last. But then yeah, quality went pretty well then on. Uh, on Saturday evening, and then um, yeah, just just enjoyed, Le learned a bit more each race. Um, yeah, so I had a good start um, uh, off the line, uh, just got in front of, front of Matt, and then pulled a little bit of a lead away, and I was just kind of focusing on my own race, um, just you know, you know, not, not really spending too much time looking in my mirrors. And I had a horrific moment going into coppice, absolutely messed it up, almost on the grass. Matt, so Matt was right behind me. I think it caught him by surprise. So he had a bit of a wobble. Um, but yeah, th and so the, the last sort of, I think it was about three or four laps then were pretty intense and uh, adrenaline pumping. So I d just managed to, uh, to hold on, really enjoyed. Well, it was a very good race to, to watch, to be honest. You kept a lot of people in the grandstands on the edge of their seat. So very well done. You're going to be joining us for Silverstone? I am, yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, I was at Silverstone last weekend with the Well Sports and Saloon, so had a bit of practice there. So yeah, really looking forward to it. Brilliant. Well, we expect good things from you, Simon. Super. Congratulations again. Thanks very much. Thanks everyone, cheers.